Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I'd like to share with you a couple fun alternate project ideas that I came up with using the contents of the March 2018 5th Anniversary Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up! titled May Good Things Grow. This kit came straight to my mailbox and contained all the papers, envelopes, adhesives, doodads and embellishments that I needed to make four sets of these intended cards and beautiful envelopes. All I needed to provide was my clear block so that I could stamp with my stamps and this free one was included in my first kit and my scissors. As a subscriber I really love that I get new stamp sets and ink each month and I can continue to use them even after the kit that it came in is completed. You can see I've already loved on this stamp set because it's starting to get discolored. That's because I already made a few samples before I recorded this part of the video. Each kit also includes a mini publication with photos, written directions, supplies and tips, and a link to a how-to video. And as they always do with every March kit celebrating their anniversary, this month Stampin' Up! included a free little gift. And this time it is two sheets of these fun wooden embellishments, white on one side and natural color on the other side. I'm using a few of these in my samples that I'm going to create with you today. These kits are a Stampin' Up! product, so the colors and the images and the supplies coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products. I'll be using a few extra supplies as I share my unique projects. You'll find these items listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look below for links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription, renewing your subscription, paper pumpkin promotions, joining my paper pumpkin fan club on Facebook, and seeing peaks of some exclusives that I send to my personal subscribers. If you're watching my video on YouTube, you can also click on the link below that will lead you to my website where I've shared close-up photos of what I'll be sharing today. Let's get started. First of all, I want to mention to you the immense joy I have at how popular paper pumpkin kits are becoming. Um, not that I'm happy about this, but the uh, last kit, this one here, the March kit, it actually sold out a day and a half earlier than the deadline. Um, you're supposed to sign up by the 10th of the month if you want that month's kit. So March 10th was the deadline, but this kit sold out midday on March 9th, which means and which tells me to make sure I share with you that if you're interested in getting paper pumpkin kits in the future, you want to sign up probably a few more days earlier than that, just in case it happens again. Um, I'm so excited that it's that popular. This is a fifth anniversary kit, so um, of course it was uh, very, very exciting to see that we had so many people interested in it. I do also want to mention that some of the instructions um, in here I had a couple questions about, and so I want to share with you some things that, uh, that I was questioning while I was making these. In in step number two, it tells you to adhere the cardstock strips, and it looks like the strips um, are, are going to just be the exact length, but they're actually a little bit longer. So you're going to trim off the excess after you adhere them to this uh, card, pa this, this panel here. Um, step number three, it mentions label A, and there's actually two label A's, so use the one that is shown in the photo. That label A is what they're referring to. Step seven, um, I highly recommend taking this piece and flipping it over because you're going to have a couple other areas. I think there's four areas where you want to make sure that you take um, those little sections out when you're punching this out of your sheet. And when you're punching it out this way, they're harder to see. But if you flip them over, you can see where all those little sections are that you need to remove. And in step eight, we have the envelopes. So the envelopes close with the twine like this and the way that you get them on is to use the little brads, right? So you're going to open up your bag of brads and once you've got a brad in your hand you want to open up those prongs just a little bit, not all the way, 
but just enough where your finger will fit between the two legs of the bread. Then when you put it through here, and of course you'll have that other piece on top, but when you put it through here, you can actually feel with your hands on the inside of the envelope on how and where to open up that prong. If you put it in there closed, it's gonna be a real bugger to try to open up the prongs and um, expand it. So that's my tip that I have for that. Another thing that you'll want to be aware of is that each card receives three pearls. So this card gets the three pink ones and this one gets the three purple ones. Um, the cover of the, of, the, of the directions shows five pearls on this card and you don't get enough for that. So, And then the last thing that I want to mention is from steps uh, three, or sorry, steps four and five. You're going to take your twine, your 36 inches of it, um, and you're going to stamp this piece here so it's mounted onto a block. This is one of my ergonomic blocks so it is easy to hold in the hand. This is the same size of the freebie that you get with your first kit. So this is size D and I'm also going to use a full size ink pad. This is the early espresso ink pad in the full size. We'll go ahead and ink that up. We'll stamp it onto our label piece and then we'll take out those little extra pieces there in the hole. Move that aside. Fold your ribbon in half, or your twine in half. And you're going to start with the looped end. And you're going to go down and back up. And then through this hole right here that's created on the looped end, this is where the ends of your ribbon are going to come through when you wrap it around your, your, your layer. So let's grab that layer. And in fact, I'm going to do it on this pink layer here. We're just going to wrap it around like that. And that's how that goes, okay? But this is then cinched up to right where the hole is. So once you have that nice and tight and positioned right, then you can take and tie your ribbon into a bow. And it will hold in place. So that's how you get that very pretty look. So did you notice this one last thing? You can see that this crumb cake floral um, piece here is on the purple base and the pink one is on the crumb cake base. Well, I switched it around, <laughs> so I thought it looked better this way. So I have my pink on my purple and my crumb on my crumb. Okay, these envelopes are gorgeous. They really are. They have a lot of 3D-ish feel to them. I mean, they're, they've just got layers, and, and it's a really pretty look. How wonderful would it be to have your card in an envelope like this, wrap this around, gift it to somebody just like that? Well... There's a problem because you can't just slip it in the mail like this. You certainly could address this side, but you've got little things sticking out and the post office would not like that. So here's a couple suggestions. You can omit all the embellishments, you know, just get rid of those, get rid of this little accent here because it's still pretty this way, right? So you could take and put a big sticker over the top. This is a mailable size. So you could put a sticker, something sticky, or tape it down and then write on it and address this side and mail it that way. Or you can take this whole thing and you can insert it into a clear envelope so that it protects all of that, all those doodads. <laughs> but it's, uh, so you can still have all those fun embellishments on there. But it will go through the mail as long as you have a sheet in there inserted with the address. You want to put, of course, the address um, on the paper and then slip everything in there, seal it shut, and put your sticker on the outside. This is our lemon lime twist cardstock, which I think is really pretty with this kit. This is the only time I've shown it to you, though, is with this, <laughs> with this example of doing it with the um, envelope. I just love that color. So that's, that's the other thought, or of course, just hand deliver it. But yeah, so there's a couple options there. There are always so many fun elements in these kits. 
Every once in a while, I try to double the amount of cards in one of the card kits. So we have eight cards that you can make with this kit. But by adding in some note cards and envelopes from our online store, these are three and a half by five inch cards when folded in half. Um, if you add these in, we have vanilla or whisper white. If you add them in, you can actually take and make double or even triple the amount of cards. So I'm going to show you how you can take those supplies and make 20 cards total plus extra. So I'm actually going to cut up parts of the envelopes, um, use the envelopes in the card design, so you're losing those eight cards, but a note card and envelope packet comes with 20 envelopes. You'll have the 20 envelopes for the 20 cards, but you'll still be able to make even more cards. So here we go. Let's show you the first design. We're going to be using the vanilla note cards, and I've already stamped onto this piece. What I want to do next is add the little green circles right behind it. So I'm just putting a little adhesive back there. I like to use my snail adhesive. You can use the glue dots that come in the kit, but this is just you know really quick for me, and it's what I'm used to. So let's add that to the back. So it's just peeking out a little bit like that. And now we want to put our um, brads in here, so we need to make a little hole in there. And you can certainly use a push pin, but you want to make sure you have something behind it as you're pressing in. I'm using my piercer and my um, stamp and pierce mat, and I'm putting new holes in that little those little green circles. And now I can take my brads and stick them through. Open up the prongs in the back. Stick this one through. And now I have a nice little accent on each side of that. We're going to go ahead and add that to the front of our card. So we're going to put it, pull in our adhesive again. We're also going to use the dimensionals that come in the kit. And holy cow, look at the amount that you get. <laughs> There's a ton of them this time, which is great. I love dimension on my cards. We're just taping that straight down. Again, you can use your glue dots to do this. And don't put your adhesive all the way to the edges on this piece because we're going to slip a couple things underneath. And let's just actually lay it down onto the card surface. We don't want to actually stick it yet. And let's do the same thing to all these pieces. We'll put the adhesive on the back. So I have snail adhesive on the back of these, or you can use your glue dots. And then I put a couple dimensionals on the backs of these. Because now what you can do is you can kind of shimmy and see where everything will work without having to stick everything completely down. So, I think that looks good actually. The words aren't too hidden. And now you can press it all in place. And there is one of our finished cards. Then after you've used those pieces on that card, we're going to bring in another blank note card and this piece here. Now this piece, I figure you can cut into two. So let's just do a little trim. We'll flip it over and you can take a paper or a pencil and you can just kind of do a light line on there and let's grab our trimmer and we'll just line up that pencil line in the channel of our trimmer. and slice it. Now we have a nice clean cut and we have two pieces that we can add to our card. This one we're going to add, um, I think we'll add this one first. So let's go ahead and flip it over. Put your adhesive on the back and let's put that at the very top. We're going to have this be a vertical card so we'll have that at the top. And then this piece, let's put Gosh, you have enough of these. Let's put a few dimensionals on the back. Let's move this one because I think that one might get cut off. And this one will stick right here. And now we'll turn the card over and we can grab our paper snips. And as the card is folded, we'll just push the paper right up to the edge there and we'll trim. Oops, we got a little piece down there. So just trim right up to that edge. 
There we go. And then let's put our sentiment on the top, the top right corner. There's our second card. What other pieces do we have? We have this one right here. So we're going to do something similar where we um, stamp this piece with our sentiment. Let's use that same one again. And then let's flip it over and add a little adhesive to the back so that these guys can go on there. And then we're going to bring in the piercer and the mat, and we're actually going to put holes in a different spot. We're not going to put holes here because we want those little circles that are inside to remain. We want to have that that be a solid, uh, a solid purple circle. So we're going to pierce a little bit further away, about an eighth of an inch above this little oval, and about an eighth of an inch below that one and we're going to put our little brad accents in through there. And then we added some fun twine around the base part of this layer, and I've also put three dimensionals on the back of this layer so that it's covering up the circle the little whole circles on the insides of those purple circles. We don't want those to go away. We want those to look solid. And then we just stick this right in the lower right corner and add some adhesive to the back here. And there is card number three. We have two more. I love that you can see through these. <laughs> it's just perfect. All right, the fourth card is a super simple one. We're going to use this little piece here, a few of the pearls. We're going to use an open up, an opened up on envelope. So you actually have to take and get your fingers in there and separate all this stuff out. And I've already trimmed off uh, the top there. We're going to trim straight across and get rid of the word flower. And let's trim this way. Oops. Anytime you go into uh, a, a not so strong area, it gets caught up on your trimmer. Now our card, our card base, where did that go? Here it is. Our card base is three and a half inches tall. There we can see it there. It's three and a half inches tall. So we need this to be within the three and a half inches. And let's see, do I like that? That looks pretty good. So we want to cut this to three and a half inches this way. Again, we're going into a very fragile, there we go, we got it. And then it really doesn't matter how wide this is because it is going to be shorter than five inches anyways. So try not to trim right on the score line. Again, that's just a, a weak area of the cardstock. It'll just get all ratty. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So now we have our piece that was cut just inside the score lines and is three and a half inches tall. And this just gets applied to the front of the card with regular adhesive or your glue dots that come in the kit. And there is a very pretty Mother's Day card ready to go. I love that this stamp set has a Mother's Day sentiment in it. And we'll be using these pieces to do our fifth card. You're also going to need to have stamps, of course. We're going to use the happy birthday one. I love that these sets come with happy birthday ones. I love to have different fonts um, with happy birthday because everybody needs birthday cards, right? And then we have the leaf image. We're going to use that. And we're going to use the, the fig um, ribbon and some of those purple pearls. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to put adhesive on most of the upper left side of this piece. 
This is a fun card layout that a lot of crafters are doing. You're, you're going to see it out there. Oh, we don't want to do that yet. Hang on. That was the second step. The first step is actually to ink up your leaf stamp. And I know that this is fig card stock, but when you um, stamp with the early espresso ink onto it, it actually looks more like a tone on tone. So it's going to be a very fun, 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 fun look. And you're just going to do a random pattern. You can see I'm twisting my paper and my stamps as I fill in with these leaves. You'll also notice that I went off my paper, which is why grid paper is so awesome. I recommend that. <laughs> okay, now we've got that on there. Now you're going to take this piece that you've put adhesive on and you're going to lay it down kind of at an angle like that. We flip it over. We use our paper snips and we trim. And you're using the edge of the card base as a guide. If it helps to have a longer handled scissors, you could use that. You could try to put it in your paper trimmer, but I feel I think that's it's great to actually feel the scissors up against the edge of the the cardstock base. So now we've got that. I'm going to hold that down with the stamp pad. Now we're going to stamp the happy birthday on there. We're going to have that in the upper portion of the card. And I want this to be straight. So this is at an angle, but I want my words to be in alignment or parallel with the top edge of my card. And then the little accent pieces come in. So we're going to put some leaves there and we're going to put a fun little bow. To make a bow, you want to grab your ribbon, have no loops in it, take the two ends, cross them over each other, take the top one, bring it through the hole, and then pull. And you have to kind of adjust the tails of your ribbon every so often to get that look. And it can be a messy looking bow because this card does not have to be, it does not have to be perfect. In fact, it's already, it's already off alignment, so it does not have to be um, in perfect alignment. And then we're going to stick that on there with some leaves coming out. I don't know, do the leaves look better coming straight out the top? Maybe they do. And with glue dots on the back, we're going to add that embellishment there. Put some adhesive back here. And position that where we think it will look best. I kind of like it off to the side, actually. <laughs> I think I like it there because the card is not straight, right? And then we just have some pearls to add. And we've made them kind of emphasize the sentiment on the card. That's the fifth one. So you have these five cards. These are the main ones that I recommend, but you can make so many more. You can make eight more cards. Because Okay, so this is five. Five times four, you make 20 of them, right? Because you're doing four of each. And then you're going to have leftover supplies. You're going to have those extra card bases. You're going to have eight more of these. So you might as well make eight more cards. <laughs> I know they're not going to have envelopes, but still, let me show you two other card designs. So let's bring in this one. These are the tops of the envelopes. This one is super quick, and it almost has a masculine look to it. We're going to put adhesive on the back side here. And I've just centered it between this edge and this edge. And on this one, we're going to use the crumb cake side. And then you just have to kind of like do the same thing. And then with this one, we're going to tuck it underneath. sort of right there. And then we're going to stamp that happy birthday on here again. Because again, we always need birthday cards. So we'll stamp that on there, flip it over, grab a couple dimensionals, and look at how quickly 
that masculine card came together. Very nice, right? And here is my other card idea. You are going to get a ton of these guys. These little wooden embellishments are a plenty <laughs> in your kit. So, um, so let's go ahead and make a card using the card base and the wooden elements. Did you know that you can actually stamp on these pieces? And you get a really nice look. The ink does not bleed. It's awesome. <laughs> Little tip, when you're taking these pieces out of here, you don't want to be bending the elements because they like these pieces here are very fragile. So I'm just going along the outside edges and I'm trying to break where it's attached. Um, pieces like that will easily pop out, but you don't want your, your branches to break, so you almost kind of have to loosen the whole thing and then make sure that it's sliding out all at the same time. All right, so I'm going to gather up all these pieces and I'm going to bring in my trimmer again because I want to cut down a little card base piece from the envelope we just used. Make it three and a quarter inches wide by, yeah, by four and three quarter inches long. And then we'll just stick this down onto our base of our card here. And then this piece can just go right on with the glue dots or the snail. So you won't be able to make probably four, uh, yeah, four of these sets because you only have two sheets of the wooden elements, but you could do different designs. Um, then you could add the pearls, but I think you're going to use them all up if you use them with the styles of cards that I just shared with you. So if you want to add some extra pearls for even more dimension, you could grab some from our online store. We have some um, that are very similar and they come in that um, whitish uh, vanilla tone. One more thing to mention about these. You do not have to stick with vanilla. If you're more of a white card base kind of person, then you could totally change it up, flip those wooden elements over and use the white side on a white card base. You can see I did vanilla here, but see it looks just as good on a white card base. And in this design here, I used a white card base for that one. So you could totally change it up. If you have the, the Whisper White Vanilla Note Cards and Envelopes, then it'll still work. Because if you look at the cards in this kit, it's really just the labels that have the vanilla. And the labels can be flipped over. See? Vanilla side, white side. So here are those cards again. We have seven different card styles. You'd be able to, with the pack of cardstock and envelopes, um, you get 20 envelopes in there. You could seriously make 20 cards with this kit and have enough supplies to make some extra bonus cards. Let's take a look at that free gift again. Now besides making sure that when you press these pieces out that you're pressing evenly so that you don't break them, especially these that have these really skinny parts to them, um, the next thing that you're probably wondering is where do I put the adhesive? So you could use our our multi-purpose liquid glue, which we sometimes call the green glue. It's just a liquid glue that you can use to put on the back of these really, really skinny parts on here. Or you could take the glue dots. You can peel the backing off. Oh, look at that. It's stuck to the plastic sheet. Sometimes that doesn't happen. But either way, you could take your fingernail and just kind of roll it into a thin tube and then you can use that as an adhesive on the back. Either one of those options should work, so just know that these can roll up really skinny. <laughs> but there's another way to attach them to your projects. So you can take a strand of this wonderful twine that comes in the kit, and you get lots of it. You can fold it in half, grab the folded end, loop that through one of the holes on your wooden element, after you have that loop through, then take the two ends of the twine and bring it through the loop. 
and then just cinch it. So this is another way to attach it to your projects. And what I did is I took this end then and I tied it onto the one of the loops of our beautiful tags in the kit. So this is that laser cut tag and I just looped it through and tied it into, actually what I did first is I first tied a knot. So I took and tied a knot, just an overhand knot by taking both of the strings together, pretending they were one string, and just making a loop and cinching that, and then taking these ends, bringing it through the hole, and tying a little bow, okay? So that's how I got that attached to this. My pearls are coming off. <laughs> and then, um, of course, I stamped this first, then tied this through, and then I took another piece, and I just brought it through the top like that. And now I'm going to decorate it with our pearls. Now, here's the thing. Stampin' Up! has extra pearls in the online store, so you don't have to worry about your limit that you get with the kit. You can always add extra pearls that you can get in the online store to your fun projects. So that's a good add-on if you're a um, kit subscriber. Now, let's take this tag and put it on a fun little project. These beautiful envelopes just should not be envelopes. <laughs> they need to be on the fronts of cards, right? Um, but this envelope, I thought, well, it says flower seeds. Let's turn it into a flower seed little holder, a little container, a gift container. So we're going to use that tag on this envelope and make it into a fun little sour cream type of um, little box. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut across the top. You're going to remove that, front, that top flap and you're going to get this look. So you got that removed there and now you can see I've already tried to manipulate it into the box. It's going to work. <laughs> so now we're going to take this tag that we've created and we're going to place it against that hole in the back. So you've got this hole there and we got to make something out of it, right? So we're going to use it to insert the strings from our little tag and we'll just pull those up and through. And then we're going to use some really strong tape on the inside here. We're going to use what's called our tear and tape adhesive. And we just need enough strands to go across the um, half of the front and half of the back. And then we'll also put a little bit in there to hold the, the tag string in there. So if we just kind of eyeball measure, We've got a little piece that will go across the front and back. So you just kind of have to open it up like this and lay that in there. Don't take the backing off quite yet. And since we've got our string here, let's make sure that we can pull that forward. And do you see what I'm doing here? I'm going to make that adhesive go right across our string so it's holding our string in place. Actually, we can kind of loosen that a little bit. There we go. Now let's put another strand on this side. And then, before we remove the backing, we need to fill it with some goodies. So, of course, flower seeds need a bag of little seeds. So we're going to slip those in there. And then I thought it'd be fun to just kind of add some fun little fake um, silk flowers in there too. So let's just shove those down in there and we can kind of go like this and remove the tape backing and squish it together. If you need to, you can use the, uh, the help of a little stapler and we may need to do that. Fun! Fun, fun, fun! Look at that. Flower seeds. It's a very good size box too, as you can tell from the size of my hand. Um, it, it will hold some good stuff in there. You could even put candy in there. Now the heavier the object, the more it's going to want to pull open. So that's where you probably would need a stapler to reinforce it. Let's just finish this off by tying a fun little bow at the top. And now we can sign the back of our tag and gift it to a friend who likes to garden. Kind of unique, cute, right? <laughs> The last project that I'm going to share is a 12 by 12 scrapbook page. Something that you can share on the wall though, not something that would be in a book. And So I'm only going to make one 12 by 12 page, I'm going to make two versions of it. 
and it, it again it's supposed to be one that you would display on your wall um, sort of in one of those 12 by 12 frames um, so that you can show off one beautiful photo. So these are the elements that I'm planning to use. I'm going to use one of those envelopes, uh, a card base, some of these green accents, leaves, some of the wooden elements, a little bit of twine, and at least one of the brads. So let's see what I come up with. And there is the finished layout. I'm going to show you another version. So what I did on this, did you notice that I used my scissors on these wooden elements? You can totally cut them. <laughs> They're pretty easy to cut, um, So as long as you have a skinny piece. So I just took my scissors and made the stems a little bit shorter so they were closer to the flowers. And then, of course, I used adhesive on the backs of these leaf pieces, on the back of these little pieces here. I actually put the adhesive over um, on top of it before I took the little circle in the middle out. And so I have these fun little circles coming out from the edges. Um, rolled up glue dots behind these uh, little wooden elements here. This is where the main photo would go. And of course, this is an envelope, right? So there's a pocket inside there. So if you wanted to put memorabilia in there, you totally could. And again, there's the finished layout. Let me show you one other version of this. For this layout, which is a slightly less feminine version, I'm going to cut down one of the fresh big card bases. I'm going to cut down an inch on each side so it will now be four inches by six inches and that is going to be where our photo would be placed and then for this piece here I'm actually going to stamp in all the four corners and then I'm going to stamp on one of the extra little pieces that was cut from that card base and let's just trim into it. I'll cut first right into the middle. And where that point is, where I've ended that cut, is where I want to go from corner to there. From the corner. Here's the finished layout. Yay! So I have a little bow on here stuck on with glue dots. Um, you saw me do this little piece here, put a little um, brad here and on these spots here and of course did the circles the same way. So just a fun little focus page to hang on the wall to highlight some beautiful wonderful photo. Um, yeah, or you can put it in your scrapbook. Okay, so here's the other one again and this one. All right. Celebration is here. This is the best time of year to purchase paper pumpkin kits in three, six, or 12 month prepaid bundles. If you purchase a prepaid, then you can pay as little as $17.92 per month in the US and get free products from the Celebration brochure and possibly free products through our Stamp and Rewards program. Click on the link below to learn more about these rewards that you can earn when purchasing prepaid subscriptions during Celebration. Now that you've watched my video, I hope you can see that there is so much more to these kits than meets the eye. Never tried Paper Pumpkin? Not sure if it's something that you want to get month after month? Well, the kits in the US are just $19.95 plus tax. That's it. What if you don't like the kits? Well, there's no commitment needed. You can stop your subscription at any time. Plus, if you are completely new to Paper Pumpkin, you can get your first two months for 50% off right now. Click on the promotions link below for more information. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more Paper Pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of these projects, see photos of other Paper Pumpkin kit ideas because I share even more every month, and see many other great ideas that I share using Stampin' Up! products. If you're watching my video on YouTube, look for links in my description below. And to receive some extra exclusive Paper Pumpkin project ideas, get your Paper Pumpkin subscription started with me as your demonstrator.
I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.